I've always said the day you start reading Salah or fulfilling your prayer because you want to do it is the day you've arrived at a new level in your connection with Allah. What do I mean? A lot of us, we fulfill our five daily prayers not because we want to, because we have to. Very big difference. Very big difference. I'm not saying it's wrong to do something because you have to do it, but the day you now do it, not because you have to only, but because you want to, you enjoy it. It gives you the comfort. It brings you that solace. It brings you contentment. That's the day you've arrived at a new relationship with Allah. So I'm encouraging yourselves and myself when we fulfill the prayer, let's do it because we want to do it. Not because we have to do it alone. Have to meaning it's compulsory, but I'm not doing it just because I want to get over and done with it. No, I'm doing it because you know what? Really, Allah is so merciful. He's allowed me to breathe. He hasn't charged me for the heartbeat. He hasn't. 36,000 heartbeats. How many heartbeats? Thousands of them. 136,000. If you had to pay a penny, a penny, half a penny, a penny per ten. We make it cheaper. Penny for hundred. We would be bankrupt. Do you know that? When one beat of your heart is out of sync, everything comes to an end. Subhanallah. One beat is out of sync. You're rushing from pillar to post, hospital to here, cardiologist to another. Everything's happening. Why? One beat went out of place. But you and I didn't even think of that for these 50 years that we've been alive. We didn't remember Allah because nothing went wrong. So Allah says, when I love you, I'm going to let some things go wrong so that you can come to me. Allahu Akbar. When things go wrong in your lives, my brothers and sisters, it's because Allah wants to bring you closer to him. Not because he wants to chase you away. So bear patience. Patience is part of the remembrance of Allah. That's why the hadith says, Inna Allah idha ahabba abdan ibtala. When Allah loves a slave, a worshipper, he sends tests in that direction so that this worshipper can become softened and closer to Allah. When your problem and difficulty and hardship brings you closer to Allah, it was a gift of Allah. But when your ease sends you further from Allah, it was the punishment. The Prophet says, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, should I not show you something if you were to do it, you would actually increase the love between you. Spread the salam. So salam means Starting with the greeting, Assalamu Alaikum, but it's a prayer. Learn to pray for each other. How do we pray for each other? The first words you should ever say when you see another is a prayer. Did you know that? What's the prayer? Assalamu Alaikum. What does it actually mean? May peace be upon you. What is may peace be? It's a prayer. I'm asking Allah to have peace on you, blessings on you, mercy on you, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, the mercy of Allah and His blessings, may they be upon you. If you're really genuine and I'm really genuine with that, we've solved most of our problems. The difficulty is, we just say, Assalamualaikum, and it's done. Doesn't it sound so familiar? It's an act of worship, I'm praying for you, brother, may peace be on you. My brothers and sisters, when we learn to love each other for the sake of Allah and we do good to people because we want to earn the pleasure of Allah, we've truly remembered Allah. We've understood the link between us. I was saying, I started greeting people, smiling, ask them, how are you? If you see someone young, ask them, what's your name? Even if you don't remember the name for very long, but it means so much to them. It means so much to them. How are you feeling today? That question is, subhanallah, it changes the day of a person. But you know what? I like to travel by train here in the UK. The Virgin train, straight to Houston, mashallah. I think it's the quickest way to get to London. That's what I think. Faster than an aircraft. Because aircraft, you've got to go early, one hour. You can't carry X, Y, and Z, you know, meaning your, your liquids and your this and your weight needs to be 20 kilos and so on and so forth. Train. You catch it, I promise you, two hours, 11 minutes later, you're landing somewhere. But there's one problem. Everyone's just looking down. And a lot of them are just on their phones. And there's no one. We have a difficulty. Muslims do not greet Muslims. 
If you see a Muslim brother or a sister, they will justify not greeting each other. They won't. Because why? <gasps> Haram. A Muslim sister, you can't greet her. Haram. But the next, hi Susan, what's up man? Huh? Okay. <laughs> what happened to that? Subhanallah. Why the double standards here? Greet the people if you are greeting them. You know, we've seen, I've seen people requiring help and the Muslims just zoom past. Boom, 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 straight past. And who stops? The non-Muslims. They stop to help and assist. We are supposed to be reaching out first. And sometimes you might have a person who won't reciprocate it because they might be, you know, a little bit on the hard side. They might be going through having a bad day if I can just, you know, think good about them. They might be having a bad day. It's fine. You did your duty. Learn to love one another. True remembrance and the benefit of it will only be when you love one another. That's why the Prophet ﷺ was addressing his companions. He says, You see, before I translate that hadith, let me go back to another hadith. The Prophet ﷺ says, The people of paradise and the people who will be VIPs on the day of Jannah will be so many categories. And one of those categories from the seven is those who love each other for the sake of Allah. Do you know what loving each other for the sake of Allah means? I love someone because I know Allah made them and they are trying, they are trying to get closer to Allah in some way or another. And even if they're not, I would love to see them come out of that sin they may be involved in. So I will work in my own way to get the message across to them. Because the Prophet ﷺ says, لَأَنْ يَهْدِيَ اللَّهُ بِكَ رَجُلًا وَاحِدًا خَيْرٌ لَكَ مِنْ حُمُرِ النَّعَمْ For Allah to use you to guide one person towards this goodness and guidance is better for you than حُمُرِ النَّعَمْ actually means the red camel. And the red camel was the best and most expensive means of conveyance at the time. You know the Range Rovers and helicopters we spoke about moments ago? Something like that. It's better for you than your heli. Better for you than your little private jet is if Allah used you to guide how many people? How many? One. One. That's the hadith. So work on yourself to be able to address people who might be seemingly astray in a way that when you talk to them, they remember Allah. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.